Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your Creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 327 for the 20th of Tishrei in a leap year. So perhaps the most misunderstood and yet most well-known quote from Friedrich Nietzsche, the German philosopher, is the phrase, God is dead. That's, That's a phrase that he's very well known for. And people tend to misunderstand this phrase in thinking that what Nietzsche was doing when he said that, is when he wrote that, is that he was asserting atheism. He was trying to prove atheism and how he didn't believe in God. When in fact, this isn't what he was doing at all. In the in asserting the phrase, God is dead, Nietzsche was actually lamenting uh, the values of the West. And he was saying that that the Enlightenment, the, the whole era of the Enlightenment and Western society actually made for a place where much of the sanctity that used to be around in the world was now gone, that people didn't hold anything sacred anymore, that the that religion, religious values and everything were dwindling, that, that society was was collapsing in this way. And he, he was saying this in a way it was, a, it's, it's like if you look at the actual context um, with where this comes up is it's in a speech b- made by a man who I believe is, is living in the forest, if I, rem- if I remember, who is in uh, the beginning part of Thus, Thus Spoke Zarathustra, which is one of Nietzsche's most famous books. And he's mourning this. He's mourning this idea that there is, that there's nothing left sacred in society anymore, that the sacred is gone, that people don't hold things sacred anymore. So the reason why I bring this up today is because in today's Tanya, which is pretty short, uh, we s- we'll see that the altar about Lahavdil, right? I love Havdalas, of course, uh, is actually l- uh, lamenting the same concepts, the fact that people are not holding things sacred that they should be holding sacred. Namely, what? What is it that the altar Abba is complaining about and, and calling to his chassidim to hold sacred? Is what we've been learning in the past few episodes about this idea of 10 Jews gathered together. So we learned in the past few episodes about how the power of 10 Jews gather together and how when 10 Jews gather together to pray or to learn or even just to be together, this has the power to draw down the Shekhinah, the the divine presence in such a way that is so powerful that angels can't even stand it. That an angel would, that the Baal Shem Tov taught that the angel would, the angel would expire in the presence of 10 Jews because of the intensity of this divine light. So with that being said, what we're going to be learning about today is the ultra Rebbe telling his chassidim that, that thus, you know, like with this in mind, he's uh, he's very upset that what he finds is that when you go to Shul, when he goes to Shul, when he sees different synagogues, he sees that people are treating this place very lightly. And before prayer, after prayer, people are just kind of like hanging out and speaking like very frivolous kind of words and not treating the space with the sanctity that it deserves and that it warrants. So today's Tanya is really a call to return to that sanctity, to return to a resurrection of that sanctity of the sacred and of holding and recognizing the sacredness of the te- of 10 Jews being together. So let's get into the text and see how the altar Rabbi explains this. And so for context, we are still in the middle of Epistle 23 of Igeris HaKodesh. And so the altar Rabbi begins and he says so thus meaning uh, keeping in mind everything we learned about thus far and please go back and listen to previous episodes if you need to catch up Uh, so the ultra says that with all of this in mind then it's very bad in my eyes 
that this thing that's happening under the sun, like this thing that's happening in broad daylight, this is, he's using this poetic phrase. It comes from Echa chapter two, verse 17, where it says, Ma'ase this that is being done under the sun, this something's happening in broad daylight that is upsetting the altar. But what is it? He says, especially amongst my brethren and friends that come to God and drawing towards God. What does this mean? This means prayer. So it's, it's specifically, it's people who are coming together, uh, in order to pray, his his chassidim that are coming to pray, and he sees that after prayer or before prayer, it becomes a moshev letim, it's called in Hebrew, a company of scoffers, um, God forbid. So the ultra is very upset by this, and he brings a teaching from the from Pirkei Avos um, to kind of berate the chassidim in this way. He says that in Pirkei Avos chapter 3, Mishnah 2, it's taught that two people sit, that sit together and if there are no words of Torah that are exchanged between them, this is considered the company of scoffers. So it's like basically any two people that come together, they should talk Torah. And so he says that now, if this is the case with two people, so imagine if we're talking now about 10 people, which we already learned about, that when there's 10 people, then the Shekhinah rests upon these 10 people. So if this 10 people becomes this company of scoffers, this Moshev Leitzim, then there's no greater insult and shaming of the Shekhinah than this, God forbid. And the Altarpa says that we see that there's a teaching in, in the Gemara in Kedushin, page 31a, where the sages taught that if somebody commits a, a sin in private, then he's repulsing the feet of the Shechina, is the terminology that's used there, God forbid. So all the more so, if this is what happens if a person commits a sin in private, so what about if a person commits a sin in public? Then they are they are pushing away the whole stature of the creator, God forbid, as it were. So it's like if a person does it in private, it's one thing, you're pushing away the feet of the Shrina. So if it's in public, it's like you're pushing the whole thing away, right? Um, because as it says, there's a teaching in also in the Gemara in Sota, page 5a, where it says, en ani vehu baulam, meaning Hashem is basically saying it's impossible for both me, meaning God, and him, meaning somebody who is a sinner able to dwell in the same in, in the world there, there can't there's not enough space for both it's like we it's pick one or the other you know so basically it's like if a person commits a sin god forbid what they're doing is they're literally pushing god out of the world god forbid and so what is and what's happening is it's actually making the bringing the king into captivity. It's in the language of Shira Shiram chapter seven, verse six, it says, mm-hmm. the king is held captive in the gutters. And the altar rapper says, woe unto the person who repulses the Shekhinah in this way. Uh, in, in, in the future, when God raises the Shekhinah, he will say to her, uh, awake, awake from the dust. This is from Yeshayahu chapter 52, verse two. He's nari ma'afal kumi. So the ultra rabbi is basically saying there's going to come a time when the Shechina is going to rise up from the dust and, uh, you know, come out of exile. And he says the person who pushed away the Shechina, like a woe unto him. So it's a warning here. And he said, and then the ultra rabbi concludes and he says that there are three reasons why the Jews are stuck in exile. And then he he quotes, he cites two of them. He says that it's because they repulse the Shechina, they push away the Shechina, and because they shame the Shechina. And so basically, this is a big, big deal is because of the shaming of the Shechina. So this is the, the section for today. And so again, uh, the basic idea is just this return to sanctity, this this acknowledgement of sanctity. That That's the message of today is the recognition that when you have 10 Jews who are together, especially if it's for prayer, especially if it's for learning, but even any time, you know, it should not turn into... Um, just sitting around and talking frivolously, but rather you should always exchange words of Torah. You should always respect the sanctity of the space that you're in because it is a very uh, holy and sacred place. And even if there's two Jews together, they should be exchanging words of Torah and not have it turn into a company of scoffers, so to speak. Um, but all the more so if there's 10 Jews, um, because you don't want to push away the Shekhinah that is present there in that place of Tanjus. So that's it for today. And we are going to continue tomorrow when we conclude this epistle. So I will speak to you then. Thanks for listening to the It Is Taught podcast hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Avraham Yitzhak Ben Binyamin Cohen of blessed memory. Music by Shoshana. 
If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Taught project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.